Hello, astronomy class. I'm Miss Byrne. This is Gabriel Kurd, and this is take two of my presentation on sundials. I wanted to open up with a thank you for the ability to have sundials as my topic for my presentation because ever since I was a small boy, my dad was a watchmaker, horologist, um, watch repair man. We would stop at any yard sale uh, and try to find and salvage around for junk or broken, torn up watches, specifically very old mechanical watches. I want to quickly show these four um, of many that I have in my collection of watches. Um, these are atomic, set by a satellite in space, and to tie in to astronomy even more, they are solar powered, so pretty cool. They are always correct in time and date, and they follow me around different time zones when I'm able to travel, and um, I just wanted to show that really quickly as a side note. Um, sundials. Sundials are incredible. Uh, the definition of a sundial is a device that tells the time of day when there's sunlight by the apparent position of the sun in the sky. Um, a sundial consists of basically two pieces. And I've known about sundials uh, most all my life, but there's one super interesting part to this uh, presentation that I will get to and I'll mention um, of a sundial that I did not know that ever existed. And uh, now I'm in the hunt to have one and own one for myself. Anyway, uh, it consists of a flat plate or, or the dial and a gnomon, which cast a shadow onto the dial. So two parts, a flat plate and a gnomon. Um, as the sun moves across the sky, the shadow aligns with different hour lines on the dial. The gnomon casts a broad shadow, and the shadow line tells the time. Uh, the gnomon can actually be made of anything, technically. Uh, you can make a sundial out of wood. You can make a sundial out of metal. You, you, know, you, can, you can make a sundial out of cardboard, paper, whatever, anything, actually. Um, and gnomons, though, are traditionally made of uh, metal rod, metal wire. Um, sometimes when they would make uh, sundials for decoration, they are much more elaborately cast in bronze. Uh, in the olden days, um, they would use brass, finer materials, um, and whatnot of all different shapes and sizes. Um, the more decorative uh, and whatnot, the more elaborate. Uh, in order for a sundial to be accurate, the position of the dial must be parallel to Earth's axis. So I'm adjusting my glasses here to keep the glare off my eyes so that we can see each other somewhat. And again, this is take two. I was very proud of take one. So uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember some of the better points and and highlights of my first video. Anyway, for what it's worth. Um, so in order to be accurate, the position of the of the position of the dial must be parallel to Earth's axis. So what that what that is is the base or the dial, remember two parts to a sundial, the gnomon and the base. The dot I'm sorry, the base or the dial. The dial must be flat to the earth. Um, a little brief history on sundials. Moving on. The earliest sundials, this is an this is an argument, this is an age-old argument, just like uh, most everything of of, of old uh, or of ancient times. Um, so uh, there, there's argument, but the, the oldest that we have proof of, or, or have, um, been able to have rec proper record of are from around 1500 BC. Um, and these were pulled from ancient Egyptian, uh, and, and Babylonian time astronomy, uh, um, 
areas or places having to do with uh, Egypt and over towards the Middle East um, where history somewhat begun, or techn technological history, we, could, we should say. Um, and there were all shapes and sizes of sundials that uh, in their region and area. Uh, the Old Testament, the Holy Bible, um, even reads in a couple different places about sundials. Isaiah 38, 8, uh, 2 Kings 20, 11. Um, two, reference, two references to sundials, um, which as a Christian myself, I, I, I didn't know that. Um, I've read the Bible and been around the Bible for most of my life. I didn't know that. It was never pointed out as that wouldn't necessarily be a philosophical teaching point for Christianity. Anyway, moving moving on. Um, the types of sundials. Uh, the horizontal sundial is very common, or probably the most common. Again, back to what I had mentioned earlier. When the dial is horizontal to the earth, uh, these are the ones that you see in people's gardens. Uh, these are the ones that we made maybe when we were kids in science class out of cardboard. We cut a circle. We put a straw through the center, um, that type of thing. You know, we, we, drew, we drew the numbers. We used a compass to, to straighten it um, to, to get the pole positioned correctly with the, with the sun. That kind of thing, that that sundial is the most common, um, and the one again, like like I mentioned, you would see in somebody's backyard or garden. Um, they can be ornate. They're actually it's a beautiful piece of yard art uh, that's quite functional if set up correctly. Um, the dial plate would be horizontal, and again, that gnomon is going to cast the shadow. Now, this is what I did not know. This. Um, besides a lot of history and the Bible part and quite a few other things, for me personally, the most interesting thing that I learned about sundials is the fact that there is such a thing as a vertical sundial. This is, uh, this is like major news for me, um, as a, as a bit of a horologist myself or a, or a, a lover of, a lover of time, um, or, or. Uh, watches, clocks, that type of thing. Um, we have what's known as a vertical sundial. This is a sundial that mounts to uh, the side of a building vertically, up and down. And um, those were found in the olden days. They were found uh, mounted to the sides of buildings where people would gather most of the time, or a lot of the time, or at least quite a few times per week so that they could, you know, see the time, the sides of churches, marketplaces, uh, any, any centers of trade, uh, any type of government official buildings, um, places, you know, places where people would often pass throughout the city and, or, or town. And um, I, I just think that's super incredible that you can actually fashion a, a sundial vertically when properly positioned on the proper face of a, of a, build, of a, of a building or a panel that is, that is vertical up and down. So, there's also what's called an equatorial sundial. Now, this sundial has a dial plate that's fixed in place to the equator. Uh, the gnomon is perpendicular to the dial plate. Um, we also have a polar sundial, which has a dial plate fixed parallel with Earth's axis. The gnomon is parallel to the dial plate, typically on the edge. of a rectangular plate with the hour line parallel to the gnomon. Now, 
I can see that in my mind because I saw the picture of it and the illustration. It's hard for me to verbalize to you um, such a tool or such an instrument. Um, but I highly suggest if anyone's interested to please dig in and research a bit more on sundials as there's there's really for such a simple tool there's so much so much going on to make it accurate make it perfect to make it within two seconds of accuracy when properly set up which moves me into the last point of my presentation which are modern uses um adornments they are found again they're found in people's gardens for the most part and um uh you know we don't we have we have time is so easy to carry with us now M most uh most everyone has a cell phone and you always keep a clock with you that's always set as well so um but besides an adornment, one of the modern uses are for accurate time. And this I also found very interesting. Um, I did some research a little further, a little deeper, and I found that um, clocks throughout the world are regularly um, double-checked by sundials in certain places because of the high level of accuracy and the fact that they never lose lose time or gain time they're always they're always right so um they are to the minute uh if placed correctly they can have a fluctuation of only a couple of seconds um there's um no the the word nomen has has become synonymous with uh watchmaking and watch companies I'm running over now. I've again I, for 12 minutes. I've tried to um, make this second presentation a little touched, a little more polished than even my first. So, uh, fun facts: the largest sun. Fun facts: the largest sundial in the world is in. Pardon my pardon my English. La Lapur, India. Uh, it's known as the Sam Samrat Yantra, or the Supreme Instrument. Uh, its construction was completed in 1734, um, so that's you know that's that's quite a, quite some times back, and it is still to this day accurate up to two seconds. Um, it's 88 feet high, which is 27 meters, so it's a it's it's a it's a uh, it's a big it's a big tool. That is a large tool. Um, I thank you so much. I've very much enjoyed this uh, project. Again, thank you for uh, allowing me to be... Thank you for accepting this uh, second attempt, please. Uh, or thank you. I've, I very much apologize for my computer illiteracy. I um, hope you've enjoyed my program. And um, I love sundials. And I'm going to have more interest in sundials now. And I... Um, actually would like to have my own sundial. I would be particular about having a nice one, possibly even the vertical to go on a, on the side of a wall, which is, uh, like I said, the most interesting point that I took from the, from the project. Thank you so much for all you do, Miss Byrne, and to my class or whoever gets to watch this video or does, and I wish you all the best and straight A's. Have a good day.